Welcome to Wherezilla's Retrospective. I'm your host, Wherezilla. Sometimes a movie that wrapped everything up with no loose ends will become a series proper despite the odds. We've seen it with Highlander, we've seen it with Psycho of all things, we saw it with Lilo and Stitch, and we're going to see it again with The Lion King. Among Disney's most classic films, and being one of the first I ever saw, The Lion King is what you get when you're not afraid to show dark material in a children's movie. Which isn't to say that it's only selling point, with impressive animation, memorable characters and songs, even if, according to Nathan Lane, Disney didn't expect it to take off. Hindsight's a bitch. And so is making sequels to films with the previously mentioned finality. After all, the film ended with Simba defeating his evil uncle and reclaiming his place as King of the Pride, everyone living happily ever after. Well, the final shot of the film did show Simba and Nala had a kid, so why not focus on that? The Lion King 2 wasn't quite as epic as the first movie, there were some continuity hiccups, and Shakespearean influence was a little more obvious this time around, but it still ended up as one of the better Disney sequels. The Timon and Pumbaa spin-off cartoon was a bit more cartoony than the films, which I suppose was to be expected given it stars the comic relief characters. Honestly, it and Lion King 1 and a half could have been contenders for a retrospective, and perhaps I should have done one of the two. But when I learned Disney was going to air a new show, the temptation to talk about it was just too great. And like the Buzz Lightyear cartoon, this new show, The Lion Guard, opened with a movie pilot to establish the new status quo. You remember when I talked about that, right? Well, like the Buzz Lightyear cartoon, this show tries to add new lore to an already existing series. Of course, in the former's case, it was fictionalizing what was already fiction in-universe, so that was only natural. But as for The Lion Guard Return of the Roar is concerned, it's less natural spin-off and more... Well, let's just say there's a reason why I seemed so confused about it when I briefly alluded to it last time. We open with what appears to be a recreation of a scene from Lion King 2, where Simba is talking to his daughter Kiara about her role as future queen. Until they get interrupted by Keon, Kiara's little brother. Wait, what? You would think, after what happened with his own father and uncle, Simba wouldn't want to risk something like that happening again, and not have more than one kid, but what do I know? Maybe he and Nala weren't being careful when they were feeling the love one night. Of course, what's less welcome is Keon's friend Bunga. Bunga, heads up! Relax, Keon! Remember, Hakuna! Get out of there, Bunga! Okay, Hyena, you want to see what this honey badger's made of? I'll show you what I'm made of! <laughs> hey, let me go so I can show that other guy what I'm made of! I am really not going to like this character, am I? Though a group of hyenas would soon like to eat him, which I'm okay with. But this triggers Keon's latent dragonborn powers as he summons a loud roar from the heavens to scare the hyenas away. Hey, yeah, this show will try to throw around certain phrases in the same vein as Hakuna Matata, but unfortunately none of them have any staying power. And on the subject of Hakuna Matata, Timon and Pumbaa are in this movie and Bunga refers to both of them as uncle. Something Simba never did when he lived with them as a cub. So I can only assume Timon and Pumbaa have tied the knot at some point after the first movie. Back to the plot, we see Simba and Rafiki talking about what happened in the Outlands, meaning something big is about to happen. Son, we need to talk. Oh, no, Dad, we already had that talk. Can you feel the love tonight? Well, I didn't expect that to be used as a euphemism. You did? Shut up. Simba and Rafiki tell Kian of a group known as the Lion Guard, a team of lions that used to protect the Pride Lands and maintain the Circle of Life. And Kian summoning the roar from the sky meant he was chosen to reform the Lion Guard. The reason it's been gone for years is, well... When your grandfather Mufasa was about your age, his younger brother Scar was the leader of the Lion Guard. Scar also had the gift of the roar. The roar made Scar feel powerful. But that power went to Scar's head. He began to think that he should be king instead of his older brother Mufasa. So Scar ordered the Lion Guard to help him take down Mufasa. When the guard refused, Scar was furious. And then Scar used the roar to destroy the Lion Guard. What Scar didn't realize was that by using the roar for evil, he would lose the power of the roar 
completely. So what you're telling me is that the hyenas were Scar's sloppy seconds. But in all seriousness, this leaves us with so many questions. Perhaps the most obvious being why Mufasa would let Scar stick around in the pride if the events of the first movie was not the first time he tried to usurp the throne. For that matter, is this the justification in-universe for Keon's existence? It would have been too much to ask Kiara to be future queen and in charge of this Lion Guard so the creation of Keon was needed? Except the Lion Guard was introduced in this movie. They aren't working with previously established continuity, it was created here! And it's not like having a spin-off starring Kiara would have been redundant due to her role in the second film. Timon and Pumbaa had their spin-off cartoon as well as Lion King 1 and a half. Are you beginning to understand why I was so confused at the existence of this thing? Keon accepts his role as leader of the new Lion Guard and is eager to assemble his new team. It's an interesting juxtaposition to Simba when he was a cub and how he flaunted his role as future king and didn't seem to take it too seriously. Of course, humility and taking the role seriously was something Kiara had going for her in the second movie, but at this point I think I've made my point about Kiara being sidelines. Not to say I hate Keon, I just find his existence unnecessary. What I do hate is who he decides to recruit into the Lion Guard first. I might not be the biggest honey badger, but I know what's in my heart. And I'm not afraid of anything or anyone! I know, Bunga. That's why I- I will help the Lion Guard fight hyenas, or jackals, or crocodiles, or vultures, or vultures. Or rock slides, or wildfires, or floods. I will stand with the Lion Guard. I'll never give up. I'll, I'll... Why don't you stop talking so I can ask you to join the Lion Guard? Say what? Come on, Bunga. You're the bravest animal I know. <laughs> You serious? I think you're confusing bravery with being too stupid to understand the danger around him. So you're probably wondering who that vulture was and what he was up to. Well, he is apparently in cahoots with the hyena's leader, Janja, and tells him about the Lion Guard's return. Don't know what happened to the three hyenas from the films, but I will say Janja here does make a good first impression all the same. During his villain song that's framed less in the lyrics and more in just the way it's presented visually, in a suspiciously similar fashion to Be Prepared from the first movie, he lays out his plan to prevent the Lion Guard from forming by waiting until nightfall and then murdering every animal in the Pride Lands while they sleep. Holy shit! This is some serious villainy right here. So Keon assembles the rest of the Lion Guard consisting of Ono the Bird, Beshi the Hippo, and Fuli the Cheetah. Yeah, she looks more like a leopard, but apparently that's not the case. Unfortunately for Keon, Simba is not pleased with his choices for the new Lion Guard. I'm not playing, Dad! My friends are the new Lion Guard. Fooly is the fastest, Beshti is the strongest, Ono is the keenest of sight, and the bravest? It's Bunga. Kion, the Lion Guard has always been made of lions. Do you really think a Lion Guard with only one lion can protect the Pride Lands? That's racist. Keon starts sulking on his own, having his own musical number, the fourth one in this movie, which given it's only 45 minutes, hurts the pacing of this thing. And then, to further confuse me, Mufasa appears in the sky to talk to Keon, and he's played by James Earl Jones. Hey, Vicofisa, are you? Yes, Kion. I am your grandfather. That's not true. That's impossible! Too obvious? So, let me get this straight. They get a big name like James Earl Jones back for a tiny appearance here, but nobody else from the movies were able to come back? You would think they would at least try to get Matthew Broderick, who played Simba. Look, I know everybody hates the guy because of this movie. That's a lot of fish. But he was in Lion King first. I think we can cut the guy a little slack for the sake of a good movie he was in. And if they really hate Broderick this much, they could have at least gotten Cam Clark, the guy who plays Simba in the Kingdom Hearts games. If it seems like I'm talking about too many little things instead of just the plot in general, that's because there's not a whole lot of plot to this thing. Which makes it all the more disappointing when we get to the climax. The lackluster, unexciting, unfulfilling climax. I can only assume there was a change midway through writing this film because Janja's original plan, kill everyone in their sleep, is forgotten and instead he and the hyenas cause a gazelle stampede. It's not even happening at night, it looks more like dusk. What's more, during the stampede, Kiara gets stuck behind a rock and is unable to get away. Like father, like daughter. Fortunately, this ends a lot happier, as Keon returns to his friends, 
gives them their cutie marks, just go with it, and manages to repel the hyenas, getting Kiara to safety. And as if I haven't been unimpressed with Bungwa as it is, he gets the gazelles out of Kiara's path by farting at them. Zah. But this is enough to convince Simba to let Keon keep his friends as the new Lion Guard. And that's Return of the Roar for you. I won't be covering the series proper because it's been renewed for a second season, and I don't do single seasons on their own. But, uh, boss, what about all the Transformers stuff? I said stuff shut you up! I'd like to say this movie did its job setting up the status quo for the Lion Guard series proper, which it does. It sets up what the Lion Guard is supposed to do, who the main characters are going to be, but it is a hampered by a few things. The most obvious being continuity, since Keon isn't in Lion King 2, so it's hard to imagine this ending very well. In fact, the more I thought about it, the more Keon and his Lion Guard reminds me of Ahsoka from the Clone Wars. Not in terms of personality, but in terms of being a character introduced in a series that takes place before a film that they will not be appearing in. Which leads to something else. The other members of the Lion Guard. Bunga is, unfortunately, the only one that gets much to do, and the others are introduced late in the movie, and as a result, it's hard to get invested in them. Part of the problem is we spent too much time on repetitive exposition and the four musical numbers. The shorter run times means these numbers take up time that could have been spent developing the new characters, and their relation with already existing characters. Obviously the series does have episodes that focus on them, but you would think the pilot movie would give us more to go on than simply the reason they were recruited. Of course, given we spent a lot of this movie with Keon and Bungo just repeating the same we need to form a new Lion Guard over and over again, it does make you wonder just how they would have been able to handle characterizing the new ones. And that's what disappoints me about this thing. It's inconsistent writing. Janja's plan changing for no reason. Keon being created for this series despite already having Kiara. Keep leaving questions about how this will fit into the grand scheme of themes. And yet at the same time, it feels like it belongs in the Lion King universe. Tone-wise, I mean. Besides Janja's aborted plan, I can tell this will be a series that has no problem dealing with death. Although it's not shown on screen, the hyenas apparently did kill some of the gazelle with Stampede. This tells me that the Lion Guard will be controversial because of its continuity problems, but there is some potential nonetheless. But regardless as to whose side you're on, you will ultimately be just as confused as I am while watching it for one reason or another. But hey, it's not like this show's gonna cause the end of the world or anything like that. <sighs> I am so gonna regret saying that, aren't I? Yes, our teeth and ambitions are